The Toyota Mini Trucks used to be the go-to truck when you wanted to build a budget rock crawler. They were cheap, they were plentiful, they had good running engines. The problem was they had independent front suspension. So most guys would just cut all that out, put a solid axle up front, and put bigger tires on and go rock crawling. Nowadays, Toyota Mini Trucks have shot up in value. Yeah, I couldn't afford a Toyota to start with. I wanted to do a solid axle swap on the show, but the Toyota was way out of my price range, so I bought this 1990 Mazda B2600i. These trucks have fuel injection, they have a five-speed transmission, but they have a goofy rear end that you can't re-gear. So instead of just swapping in a front axle, we're actually gonna re-gear the whole thing with one-ton axles and big 40-inch tires. Our buddy Graham lent us his driveway. We're gonna do it just like you would. We're gonna cut the thing and build it in the driveway, and hopefully in four days, we're rock crawling. It snowballed quick, didn't it? It really did. You really <laughs> let it snowball. <laughs> All right, here it is, Fred. Dana 60? Yep. And Dana 70? Yep, 70U out of a Ford. And you went with the 70 because you can run 717s instead of a 14 bolt, which only goes to like 538s? That is why. And we need the low gearing. Um, which end do you want to start with, the front or the rear? We'll do the rear first, get it out of the way, and then we'll tackle the front. There's going to be a lot of problems with that. So we'll get the rear in, and that'll kind of set the ride height, and then we'll just try to match it up front. Piece of cake. So the rear axle, the rear suspension, everything in the rear is going away. In fact, he's going to use the rear springs up front. So the easiest way to do that is to take the bed right off. The front will be a whole other story, but we'll get the rear done first. This is Graham and Chris. They're from Oregon Bend here. Um, this is Graham's house. Thanks, Graham, for letting us come leave a broken Mazda in your driveway. We're going to work on it. For, we're going to leave it for three days, and then we're going to leave. You can finish it up. Perfect. I think that's it. This is the stock Mazda rear leaf spring. This is the leaf spring we're gonna put on the Mazda. This is a Chevy five inch lift leaf spring and it's much longer than the stock one. So Dave's gonna cut off the spring hangers in the front and the shackle hanger in the rear. We have new uh, leaf spring hangers that'll mount to the front, probably right about behind the cab mount and then come back here to a shackle. There'll be spring under, which will help fight axle wrap. It gives you a little less ground clearance, but on 40-inch tires, we shouldn't have an issue. Same setup we did on the Toyota. It works pretty good, and it should work great on Dave's little truck. Ready? I'll get mine up. Um. All right, we're practically driving. So I got this U-bolt flip kit from uh, Rough Stuff Specialties, and it's kind of a cool kit, but I got to drill the bottom out a little bit for the bolt head on the uh, center pin of the leaf. Woo! Killing it, Dave. Yeah, day one was good. We're like almost a third of the way to being on tons. Yeah. The Dana 70's under it. The front spring hanger is in. The whole old garbage is out. Um, we have to hang the rear shackles off the back. Dave made a cross member there. So I gotta go in here somewhere. But we're out of hardware to hang that. And then we have to like center the axle and weld in the spring perches and figure out drive shafts. And we'll figure all that out tomorrow. Yep. So. The neighbor dog's barking at us. We gotta go. We gotta get out of here. So we will see you guys tomorrow. I'll weld this in first. All right, looks good.